Dr. Barbara Hong, thank you so much for joining us in ICT and Education. First, tell us about yourself, and then we'll discuss what you discussed in the conference. I'm an associate professor in special education at Penn State Altoona, mm -hmm. and I've been teaching and working with children with uh, special needs for actually over 20 years from all over the country. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure many of our audience would like to know whether there is a difference between dis learning disabilities and learning difficulties. And from your experience in the United States and other parts of the world, can you tell us if there is a difference or not? Uh, it's difference by terms and definition. But generally, uh, a kid could have a learning difficulty in many areas, but, and they can feel frustrated mm -hmm. uh, with uh, how their learning process come across, how they think, how they read. But what happens if, if it becomes severe enough mm. that there is a discrepancy between what they can actually do and what they are performing, mm. that becomes a disability. Mm. And again, that is by definition mm. of what individual, you know, like in the United States, they define differently. Mm -hmm. And within the United States, uh, different states define differently. Mm. So, But in generally, as mm. teachers, mm -hmm. knowing that Students all learn differently and that they may experience difficulty in the way uh, words come across to them, how numbers come across to them. Mm -hmm. It makes us more conscious in how we teach children. Mm -hmm. So is there one definition of learning disability or, or is it different by the country? It's different only in the way uh, they diagnose. Oh. But in general, basically, when students have difficulty um, in their processing skills, in what they thing they see and what they think they hear, mm. that's what forms a perception. Mm. And then hence they think they see this, but mm. it's actually not this. It could be in a shape of a, f uh, it could be in form of a shape, mm -hmm. uh, spatial wise, uh, reading, writing, math. It could be exhibited in any form. Okay. So why do you think kids can struggle in writing or comprehension or reading? Why can this happen? Uh, there are many factors, and what happens is that uh, a lot of time it's an internal processing difficulty that they have. Mm -hmm. Some people have difficulty learning a, how to drive, mm -hmm. you know, and that is just a difficulty. It's not necessar necessarily a disability. Mm -hmm. Some people have difficulty uh, with sports, mm -hmm. you know. So all of us have difficulty somewhere mm -hmm. as we learn something. Mm -hmm. And some struggle longer mm -hmm. before we pick it up. And others, oh, it's difficult, but I pick it up right away. So one of the things you mentioned in your session yesterday was the red flags for early learning difficulties. So for parents and teachers who don't know about this area, can you elaborate on it? Well, there are three main factors uh, when we look at uh, reading difficulty. We look at what a fluent reader can do. Mm -hmm. A fluent reader, generally from the beginning, is their ability to rhyme. Okay. Ability to rhyme has got to do with their sensitivity to how they hear individual sounds being formed uh, in a alphabet in a letter itself, and some letters forming two sounds, they can even hear that sound. Mm. So children is, has to have that sense of hearing individual sound. Mm. And the second is the way they are able to manipulate the sound. So now that they understand the alphabets, they understand that if you do a B, E, D, it says bad, mm. you know, and they know that this B is different than the D. And when you turn it around, you know, even though they could look like the B could look like a D, yeah. but they make a different sound and they put together. Uh -huh. And the third thing is, uh, got to do with their memory. They're able to retrieve what they know. Mm. The words that they know, the concept, the vocabulary, their background, how fast they can retrieve something. Mm. And sometimes it's called a rapid naming. Mm. And uh, we can do assessment for that. Mm. So somebody who is fluent in reading can quickly look at a word, look at a phrase, retrieve the background and understand. Mm. Somebody who cannot, those are the red flags. I have a hard time rhyming it, sounding it out, and what does this go with in the context? And so are, those are the red flags. Mm for kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also you mentioned something called the visual discrimination. What's that? Uh, visual discrimination is one aspect of learning difficulty, mm -hmm. which uh, actually a lot of people experience that. Mm -hmm. For example, like in geometry, mm -hmm. some people have a very hard time looking at three-dimensional shape, mm -hmm. you know, the form and, and what it looks like when it's a two-dimensional mm -hmm. and then make it a three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. uh, not everybody can look at shape or draw shapes or see things in a three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So how is 2D versus 3D relating to children's perceptions of things? Uh, a lot of time it's like a, a 
those third dimensional things. It's like saying time. It's like saying, okay, you know, to a bunch of kindergartens, uh, you have uh, two minutes left before recess. Mm. They don't really know what two minutes mean because it's somewhere up in the air. Mm. You know, they can't really see it mm. unless you explain. So, for example, uh, working with children, mm. how do you help them make a sense of what two minutes is? Mm. You could play a song, and when you hear this song, you know that two minutes is up. Mm -hmm. Or you could, uh, you know, like for example, working with my children, mm -hmm. when they are brushing their teeth and they are rinsing their mouth, mm -hmm. I ask them to watch the clock. When the red minute go one round, that mm -hmm. is one minute. This mm -hmm. is how one minute feels like. Mm -hmm. You know, so they understand, oh, this is what one, and children feel that. Children with learning disability or learning difficulty have a very hard time because time is a very abstract comes concept. Mm -hmm. You know, it's somewhere out there. How do you tell, you know, 10 to 3, I mean, what does that mean? Mm. All of these words that we use are very abstract. It's mm. very complicated for children. Okay. So what we really want to do now is to understand how technology can help in the, in the area of helping children with disabilities. So you mentioned 10 things we should look in for a website, in a website, to understand how can this help children with learning disabilities. So can you highlight on each of the items uh, so that people who don't know what, to, what they should be looking for can and can benefit from this? I think it's important that we understand what children with learning difficulty get um, frustrated with. They get frustrated with things that are cluttered mm. all over the place, a lot of commercial, a lot of instruction. Uh, they get very confused. So it's very simple. Mm. When you look for a website, you look for what is clear instruction. Mm. Very simple. The letters are large enough, there are options for different level. You know, if they want to try something easy first, they're allowed to do that. Mm. Or they want to challenge themselves, they could go to the next level. Mm. You want a website that has a way for them to immediately know their results. Mm. Oh, I do this and I get a point. Mm. Wow, it even has sound. Okay. And those who can read, they can read by themselves. But they also want a website whereby you can click on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can read this word because I forgot this word. Mm. I can even pop a picture up. Mm. There is no one site that I know that has all of this feature. Mm. So as a teacher, mm. you have to select them very carefully because you can combine different things and still help them learn so mm. that they're not frustrated. Mm. Technology is a tool for them, mm. not a, a, and it's a resource. So if you don't select it correctly, it can become very frustrated. Mm. You know, just like a car can be frustration, it can be an accident, it can be, you know, mm -hmm. rather than bring you to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. So it is a bridge for them to understand things, to reinforce, to mm -hmm. teach themselves, to say, oh, I didn't really understood this like I thought, mm -hmm. but I, I can try again. I'm not discouraged because mm -hmm. nobody is watching me. I can keep on trying again. Mm -hmm. So all these are good elements mm -hmm. for all teaching, not just children with learning disability. Yeah. Yeah. So is it more about the design of the site or is it about the content of the site or both? Well, the good thing is that there are so many things out there that oh. teachers don't have to reinvent the world. Mm. If you look at a lesson plan, don't just oh, download the entire lesson plan or download the entire worksheet. It's look at it and say, Will a student with learning disability be able to understand this? Is mm. it is too much on it? Is the print too small? Mm. Is it going to be confusing? Maybe I can enlarge it, you know, and that's the wonderful thing about technology mm. is you can make so many modifications. Don't just download it because it's convenient, mm. because it may not work for the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. So final question, based on your experience, how did you come to see that technology can motivate children and teachers to overcome learning disabilities for their students? Well, let's face it. All kids, no matter what, whether they are advanced, gifted, or with disability, love technology because it's exciting. Our mm. kids are wired in their mind. Mm. You know, they can play games. They can be doing poorly in school, but they can be on a computer playing games. So what exactly entices them? Mm. You know, is it the excitement of the sound? Is it the instantaneous reward that they get? Mm. What is it that motivates them? Mm. And, they, and then they come to school. They have to hear a talk for, you know, 30 minutes hearing yeah. the teacher talk. It is very boring. Mm. So how do you engage them? You have to integrate. The teacher has to be smarter than the kid mm -hmm. to know that this is what motivates you and I can captivate you. Mm -hmm. Is how do I captivate captivate uh, my students? And by selecting the site appropriately, you actually make them want to learn. Mm -hmm. I want to do my homework because it's so fun mm -hmm. rather than, oh gosh, just mm -hmm. another worksheet, you know. Yeah. And likewise, a kid who is gifted goes, 
I don't want to finish my worksheet faster because then the teacher is going to give me more worksheet. Mm -hmm. However, if I finish faster, I get to go on more challenging website. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for this insightful interview and we wish you best of luck in the conference. Thank Thanks a lot.